the Gospel of Mark Baptism of the Holy Spirit, Mark 1, 6-8 The last time that we met, we talked about the Old Testament prophet. We learned that the messenger that Isaiah had prophesied about was John the Baptist. And he would come and preach and point to Jesus. And this messenger, John, John the Baptist, uh, he would baptize people in the Jordan River. And people came to him, one, who believed in God, and secondly, who repented of their sins. John, bapti baptism, pointed to Jesus, who would come to earth. He was the promised Messiah of long ago. And he is the only one who can save people from their sins. Jesus baptism it is a baptism of the Holy Spirit I'm going to explain more about this later though what this means this baptism of the Holy Spirit hold on to it for now people who trust in Jesus they are saved for eternity let's look at verse 6 now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey mark 1 6 that verse says that John wore clothing that was made from a camel, camel's hair, and the belt around his waist was made of leather. That was his way of dress, and it was the same as the Old Testament prophets dressed. What did he eat? Ooh, not the same as what we would eat. What did he eat? Locusts. Let's, what does it look like? Let's see a picture. That, that's what John ate. Locusts. Secondly, he ate honey. Now the next verse, verse 7. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. Mark 1, 7. John, wow, he was such a humble man. But he preached. He preached and people listened to him. He knew it was important. But he did not feel worthy to even untie Jesus' sandals. No. John, he had such a deep confession. He did not think that he was even worthy to be compared close to Jesus. He was so humble. And what was the purpose of this? Well, God had purposed for John's life before he was even born. An angel named Gabriel went to his father, who was named Zechariah. And what did he go to him for before he was born also? Well, his father was a priest. He was a priest at the temple, and he was married to Elizabeth. Both of them were very holy people, very close to God. And the father worked in the temple, and he went into the holy room. And the angel Gabriel came there and talked to Zechariah, the father. What did he say? But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Luke 1, 13-17 You notice, you notice in that passage in the middle, what does it say? It says that he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from the womb. Now, John was filled with the Holy Spirit before he was born. He already knew Jesus was going to come. And he went and he preached to the people to make them ready for Jesus. Let's look again at this verse. 
and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Mark 1, 15b-16 John, he preached and preached, pointing to Jesus as the Lord God. He baptized with water, but he pointed to Jesus, who baptized with the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, what is that? Well, some people believe that if a person accepts Jesus as their Savior, then they need to ask for baptism of the Holy Spirit in order to receive it. Why? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit in them yet. But no, that's not true. The Bible doesn't say anything about a person needing to ask for baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says nothing about that. All people have the Holy Spirit inside them at the time they accept Jesus as their Savior. The Holy Spirit's already there. The Bible seems to teach baptism of the Holy Spirit. What for? Well, the Holy Spirit is powerful, powerful for people to minister, to, to spread the gospel to others. There's a verse that explains about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that's different than water baptism by John. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, Acts 1.5. Jesus told a few people, he said, Hold on, wait until the promise comes. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Luke twenty four forty nine. That verse, we see that Jesus told the people to stay in the city. Wait until you are clothed with the power from on high. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now question, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what else is it for exactly? Let's look at the verse above. And that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Luke twenty four forty seven. Now, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we know deeper what it's for. It's to preach the gospel that will spread out. It's the power to do that. Jesus taught about this. And John, he taught about this. And in verse 8, he explains more. John pointed to Jesus, baptism of the Holy Spirit, so gospel could be spread to all nations. It's a wonderful good news. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Mark 1 8. During Old Testament times, the kings, they had messengers who would go before them when they were going to enter a town, and they would announce that the king is coming. What did the people do? Well, they cleared out, and they made a path for the one to come. They made the path straight. It's the same idea with John the Baptist informing the people that Jesus was coming. It meant make straight the path. John, he was the greatest messenger on earth that ever lived. Why? Because he was the one who was pointing to Jesus, the greatest king. The greatest king, the king above all kings, the Lord above all lords. Amen? Coram Dio. To live Coram Dio is to live one's entire life in the presence of God, under the authority of God, to the glory of God. Everyday Breadcrumbs, Devotional Studies for the Deaf, by Brad and Tammy Schaff, taught in American Sign Language by Brad with voiceover by his wife, Tammy. All verses from English Standard Version, braddaleshoff at gmail.com.